afternoon, everyone, and welcome to episode 17 of Wowhead Weekly. This week, obviously, there was only the launch of Warlords of Draenor. Nothing really that special happened this week. So we've been trying to scrape together some... No, I'm joking. Obviously, we've had a ton <laughs> of stuff to talk about this week. And we figured since the launch had come in and it hasn't gone entirely smoothly, we would do a short question and answer session this week for all of your Warlords woes and needs. So joining me as ever is my co-host and Wowhead site manager and guide writer extraordinaire. Uh, please say hello to Peculia. How are you doing this week, Perk? I am super exhausted. Oh my god, me too. I'm still recovering from BlizzCon jet lag. Yeah, so if you guys weren't... Writing like, lots of stuff, so. Oh my god, yeah. So last week we had our... Like, Wowhead is owned by this big site called Zam. And we had our Zam... Um, look, look, here's a wristband. There you go. Zam. We had our I don't Zam, have one. We had yeah. a kind of Zam convention, like a company convention thing, because we're all like we're all sitting around in different places all over the US and the world. So we had our little Zam convention thing, followed immediately by BlizzCon, followed immediately by the launch of Warlords of Draenor. So we've been a yeah, little it's been busy. busy, just a little bit busy. So yeah. It's kind of been exhausting, but um, we obviously are very excited to see the game launch. We've had, we're very, very aware of the server issues that people are having. Perk, have you been able to play much at all or just been too busy? No, I've just been um, trying to log in my boyfriend on, on the Malganus queue. <laughs> You're <laughs> just been monitoring his by queue. making sure he didn't get DC'd every <laughs> half hour, and he has been. Oh, no. So I and, saw you uh, my nameless Harper, what are you guys over at Wowhead doing since none of you can really play WoW properly? We have so many dated things we want to update and guys we want to improve yeah. and bugs that Blizzard changes that we don't know about that we then try to reverse engineer. So we are super busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're super busy. And also like there's just there's a ton of content like as we're getting people in and reading the guides, we're getting feedback from those people and we're seeing ways that we can improve the ridiculous amount of guides we've already done. So like, for example, the bite size refreshing guide that went up this morning was an example of that where we've just seen a way that we could slightly improve the content that we produced already so there's a ton of that going on um but yeah we've we obviously i've been able to i've been relatively fortunate like i hate to be that guy but i've i've been relatively fortunate with log on i think it has a lot to do with um that the characters i'm trying to log on on are on relatively medium to low population servers um like the obviously on the eu side i've got a, i'm on a bunch of very heavy pop pvp servers but i'm not even right. trying with those <laughs> like it's not even worth my bother so i've just been trying uh, the the lower pop servers, so I've actually been getting straight in or getting in with like a two minute queue. Um, so well, that's without, that's pretty lucky. I yeah. checked on mine before, it's about a, like a two k queue, but uh, then I sort of got crit with all these things I had to test. Yeah, so exactly. To... It's hard, so it's hard for us to to really play a ton at the minute. Um, but yeah, so we've got a ton of questions, an absolute ton of questions. Let's start with a couple from the site, and we'll obviously be keeping an eye on the chat at the same time. So Argent Rose left us a ton of questions on the site. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So <laughs> thank you very much for that, Argent Rose. And uh, excuse me, just glancing down here. But she, she are, I'm assuming it's a lady because the name Rose, but maybe I'm being unfair. Yeah. They ask, what zones should we go to for leveling if we want to build up our garrisons quickly? So I'm um, not sure the specifics behind this, but your level three garrison, uh, you can upgrade it to level three when you hit 100. Hmm. So, you know, get to 100 first, do whatever you think is the most fun for leveling. If you're talking about how to get things like garrison resources, we have a currency page on Wowhead that shows all the quests that reward them, uh, all the mobs that can drop resources. And we have a series of uh, zone and, and exploration guides that talk about all the treasure chests or rare spawns that hmm. can um, contain things like resources. So if you're trying to really push to get a building, uh, in place and you don't have the resources, you know, try killing a rare that drops an item that gives you, you know, 50 to 100 resources, for example. Yeah, exactly. The rares, like the treasures, like Perk mentioned, are a great way to do them. And um, also the lumber milk in the Gorgron oh, outpost definitely. could be a very, very good contributor to building up your resources quickly. And um, there's been some talk about people on Twitter that I've seen a lot of talking about maxing out their garrisons by sort of pooling resources until they hit level 100, which allows them to then upgrade the garrison itself to level three quite quickly because they have then the resources in hand to do right. so. Right, and do keep in mind that when you upgrade to level two, and of course if you just skip up to level three, um, you unlock um, a lot of the uh, level one blueprints yeah. for, you know, small, um, and I believe, you know, yeah, small, pretty much all of them except for the salvage yard, which is a separate quest line. So. Yeah. 
you know, if you just go to 100, it's like, oh, now I know all these blueprints. Um, I can unlock them easily. Yeah, but I also wouldn't, I also, that's definitely the case. And it's a really, really good way to get all of those blueprints. But don't feel like you're doing it wrong if you want to unlock stuff as you go by any stretch of the imagination. You're you're not like playing it badly or like not min-maxing correctly. If you're just feeling like you want to actually unlock your garrison buildings yeah, exactly. and stuff as you go, that's absolutely fine. And you will, like particularly if you have certain professions, you'll find that as you're questing, you're going to pick up these scrolls, which will actually grant you blueprints. Um, so that will allow you to build buildings without really having to do a ton of additional work outside of questing. Um, obviously, you can also go over to Asheran and pick up those scrolls for um, 100, 100 gold with no bonuses. And I think they're 80 yeah. gold with some bonuses. So you yeah, can pick like up those normal, scrolls. Yeah, like normal uh, faction uh, rep discounts. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a case of getting in there and getting over to Ashran. You can start working on your garrison, but do definitely consider pooling those resources, particularly if you're getting to level 100. And even if you're AFK, like if you're if you're Perk's boyfriend, who she's keeping in the queue for Malganus, um, maybe just consider actually being in your garrison for that, because you will naturally build resources as you maintain as you remain in your garrison. Um, it's a very minimal amount. But every little helps. yeah, but I mean it, it, it adds up. If you're yeah, AFK, exactly. I was just AFK in the garrison. Yeah, exactly that. Um, so moving on then, uh, Argent Rose asks again, how are the rares working in Draenor again? Is is it actually the first time this phase and after no more phasing, and after no more phasing, excuse me, so you at least have a chance of killing them at least once. So basically the way that the rares work in, um, in Draenor is simply that they have a, like they lose their rareness after the first kill. Right, and you get the loot um, on the first kill when it's elite, so it's not, oh man, I killed this thing 50 times and I still haven't seen the Huolan mount from Timeless Isle. Yeah. <laughs> That's all been updated, and we talked about that a little in one of our BlizzCon interviews uh, with the guy who made the Timeless Isle and said he learned a lot from that. So if you're thinking, oh my god, Drainer is like the Timeless Isle, it's, yeah. there's like a lot of cool stuff similar to the Timeless Isle, but it's not the same sort of mechanics in place. Um, also for rares, I want to mention that there are a number of rare spawns that drop mounts and um, they drop for everyone the first time you kill them. There's one that's still the old school style, but the rest of them, uh, if you kill the rare, it's your first time, you automatically get that mount. So that is pretty cool and different than rares in past expansions like the Timeless Proto Drink. Yeah, definitely. It's a massive improvement, in my opinion. And so what happens after you kill them the one time, you get your loot, like it's 100%, like Perk was saying, with the exception of this one boss, which is, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, it's, it's, it's in Frostfire, it's a wolf. Yeah, it's no. a wolf in Frostfire. Oh. And I, can't, it's, I can't remember, it's, it's, it's something it's orky. It's in the Frostfire guide. Yeah, it's something orky. Um, but he's basically... Um, apart from that, all of them are on the first kill, but after that they will actually lose the sort of pretty, uh, the silver dragon around the portrait or the gold dragon around their portrait, and they're no longer going to give you any additional stuff. So it's kind of only really worth um, doing them once, unless you just really enjoy the fight. And bundling up with that, treasures are still personal, so you don't have to worry. It's not like um, the, uh, why am I blanking out on the name, but the one man's uh, treasure achievements in Drainer where, uh, sorry, in Pandaria where you had to wait for the weapon to spawn on the ground. Right, yeah. and like you to be the first to loot the weapons. That's not the case in Drainer. It's, uh, you know, everything is you go and you try to find all the treasures uh, at your own pace. Yeah, exactly that. So um, there you go. That, that's kind of it really with the rares and treasures. Um, just to address a couple of the questions that we're seeing here in chat, I've got yeah. Flameside1983 um, asking about, this is the, the, rel the servers and the DDoS issues and uh, also, there's a, a pop-up on my screen over it, but I think it's Thirsty Tyler asking about the realm queues, yep, etc. Yeah. Um, we just we just don't know exactly what is going on. Like we don't have a special inside line to Blizzard. Like we don't have the red phone chilling out around here somewhere <laughs> where Wowhead picks up the Wowhead phone and calls up Blizzard and it's like, what's going on, Blizzard? And Blizzard tells us. Like we yeah, we've just been updating our news whenever yeah. we see a post or a tweet, and exactly. you know, just stick that in. We know roughly as much as you do if you've read the front page of Wowhead. So um, obviously there does seem to have been a DDoS issue. I have no reason to not believe Blizzard about that. Um, yes, like why I would they lie? They are, and like all their investors, I don't think that could be something they could lie about. No, it could be researched, and <laughs> yeah, then you have exactly. the really angry people. Yeah, uh, that's it. So like admitting to really a, bad for business. Exactly, admitting to a DDoS is basically like that's a really big deal, and that's not something that they would do lightly at all. So I have no reason to not believe them on that. Um, as far as the server issues, when they will be resolved, I mean. <laughs> 
I, like as soon as possible is always going to be the answer to yeah, this Yeah, I mean, question. the DDoS really complicated thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, even at our company, we have DDoS protection and different things set up, and it, it, it can really be annoying to handle. So, you know, just cleaning up from that and setting up protections. So yeah, exactly. It, it takes a while. It complicates everything already going. Yes, yeah, no, exactly that. And I mean, who knows? Maybe they're still being DDoS right now. And I mean, it's just a case of like, there's, there's inherent problems with things like the garrison where you've got everyone trying to enter a personally created instance in the same geographical world location at the same time. That's, that's just problematic. Like it's hard for their server architecture to support that. And with the huge surge of people being really excited about it after BlizzCon. Yeah, I think BlizzCon really in. had a lot. And that just, I mean, I know a lot of people were really bored by playing Siege of Orgrimmar, yeah. <laughs> but BlizzCon really, I think, spiked up all the uh, you know, hype for everyone and that taxi in Times Square. Oh man, yeah, that was very cool. So, I mean, we, we can't, like, we, we unfortunately, we'd love to be able to tell you some amazingly factual, like, oh my God, this exactly, but we just we just don't know much more than you guys yeah, do. So. I mean, I think that they definitely still had problems with bottlenecks, but I think that maybe some of them would have been resolved if they didn't yeah. have the extra complications. For sure, and I, we've seen that they are, like, obviously working on the bottlenecks. Like, we've seen a, a bunch of hotfixes coming out from different um, CMs from Rygarius and from uh, Law, who's been tweeting out a bunch of, like, little bits of additional work that they're doing to fix some of the more egregious hot fi uh, hot bottleneck, excuse me, issues. Um, like, for example, I know there was an issue with the Horde garrison right at launch, where you, go, you know, you go out to do that little bit where there was fireworks for a while on the beta and was then a telescope, which you actually oh, activate yeah. the item yeah. to get your garrison to build. And that had a problem where it could only be used by one person at one time, which was just like that was a crazy bottleneck. And yeah, I just... mean, stuff like that should have been part of their stress test. I mean, they stress yeah. tested Tanan a lot, and that seemed relatively yeah. compared to the garrison. It seems they should have just. They stress should have stress tested, tested the garrison, garrison perhaps. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a smart idea. And Anthony G70 is asking why not just block all traffic from China? I mean, they can't like they, I don't know that there's a way that Blizzard personally can do that like yeah I mean when we've dealt with our stuff we we don't just say oh it's coming from here let's block all people from there it's a it's, it's sort of more complex than that yeah exactly so it's it's a very difficult situation for them and I I, I don't like we, again we don't have inside information on this but I'm pretty sure that they are working their backsides off um, to try and get this resolved as soon as possible um, so yeah I mean like that's probably going to be the last you say on this. Otherwise, we're just going to spend the whole show talking about the server issues and the DDoSing and everything like that. So and we want to talk about we want to talk about things way. other than that. So who knows? Anyhow, let's get back to some of the other questions we've got. So uh, again, Argent Rose asks, if we're interested in the story, what's the best way to go zone wise in Draenor? I mean, I think that the flow they set up naturally is pretty good. Yeah. You start in your faction area, then you go to Gorgrond. Um, I would say, uh, then you go to Talador, and then Spires of Rack, and then the Grand. I would say, though, that it's really good if you have a character that's on both factions, because Frostfire is mostly Horde, and Shadowmoon is mostly, uh, yeah. Alliance. And if you have two characters, you can also pick, um, different garrison outpost options, which gives you a slightly different storyline. Um, you know, Gorgon, especially, the outpost you choose gives you um, a different set of quests. They, they go to the same place, you get the same end results, but one of them takes you through the desert and the other takes you through the rainforest area in it. And it's really different. And uh, I would definitely say Shadow Moon, I think, looks cooler than Frostfire, but I mean, if you really want to see Thrall and Duraton and Draca and all like the major orc figures, they're all in Frostfire and that's, that's pretty cool as well. So I would say, you know, try leveling a few characters uh, early on and you can get the fuller story that way. Yeah, exactly that. So definitely with different alts. Um, as far as the, the story goes, like there's great story in all of the zones. I don't feel like there's one zone that you should skip because there's not good story in there. I would say do the Alliance Spires of Iraq. Uh, mm. Iraq, how do you pronounce it? Yeah. <laughs> or um, the Admiral Taylor's uh, quest line there. Uh, that one I thought was uh, really good. Definitely. And you can get it pretty quickly. Yeah, exactly that. Um, so... Hangar505 says, question, what would you at Wowhead expect of Ashran when the players start reaching level 100? Do you think it would be popular for both PvE and PvP content players? That's really hard to say. Like, yeah, it's, I, I don't think PvE. I don't think PvE. Yeah. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe his question is sort of saying, will PvE players be more inclined to do oh, this as opposed to like I mean, the PvE? I feel like winter, Wintergrass because there are some cool mount rewards there. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to just sort of grind up things at your own pace and 
Definitely. Yeah, it's, I mean, I can it could be that. fun. It's a bit more... It's definitely PvP, though. Definitely for PvP players. It's certainly it's a little bit more sort of... Um, it's a little bit less focused PvP than some of the PvP experiences which have existed in the game so far. So if you've got, if you ver compare it to things like arenas or battlegrounds, it's definitely less sort of like, oh my god, like right now is when the PvP is PvPing than those. Um, and it's certainly less so perhaps than the very sort of time limited things of Wintergrass and Tolbarad, where you really had to do it in that period at that time, you know, very pressured. Um, and then go from there really it's it's kind of it's kind of more like casual and you can dip in and out of it and it's a great pace yeah and there's so many or... side objectives there as well oh, as yeah. little nooks and crannies like there's a special type of fish you can get there and that fish has like a savage uh, disguise that turns you into a pirate and a ninja yeah. so there's you know, there, there's lots of little quirks along the way you know there's your home base that is all the vendors in it you can just yep. sort of chill out there. You can collect a bunch of artifacts uh, on, on the side. Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. There's a ton of cool stuff there. So there's a bunch that you can yeah. do without really hardcore participating in PvP. Yeah. Um, I should also mention, though, that um, with how PvP gear is um, scaling up in Warlords, if you're in PvP combat, it's not as awesome for PvEers right now. So um, you're not going to get PvP gear that can be, you know, Warforged or has a socket. And uh, if you're like, oh, man, this awesome PvP item, it's... 695 as yeah. I'm peeing, it's going to be 660 normally. Exactly. So it's not going to be as enticing for PvEers to grab for, you know, raids and It's whatnot. not going to be that same sort of item level, like quick fix from PvP gear as there has been in previous expansions. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly, it's going to be fun, but I don't know that it's going to necessarily be a huge draw for PvE players. If you're a PvE who might want to try a little bit of PvP and just kind of see how it goes, then I can see it being great for that, but not necessarily. If you're someone who hates PvP, you're not going to like this PvP content. <laughs> yeah. um, so question from Anthony G70, and sorry about Moobot deleting that. It's, I can still see it because I'm on the Moobot dashboard. Um, he says, the guys in garrisons state some perks of buildings that are based on your professions, although other buildings give cosmetic, etc. stuff. Is it better to build at least one primary, primarily based on your profession and others based on your interests, or just build based on your primary professions to gain the upgrade perks? Can you build over your buildings later if you changed your mind? Oh wow, that's a lot. That's so a lot the easy question. one is yes, you can build over buildings later. Yeah. Um, it just you know it just costs more garrison resources, but we've gone over some ways you can get them pretty quickly. And I think it's pretty good if you want to really get into crafting things and you have a profession. It's good to have a building because you can make these work orders that give you uh, the materials, more materials to craft the profession items that you want to craft in Draenor. So having the you know having the garrison is like having a few more cooldowns for your mm -hmm. awesome uh, profession crafting reagent. Um, however, uh, if you want to have a if you if you want to have you know there's three profession buildings and you obviously only have two professions. So yeah, you can make a building for something you don't have, and you can craft some epics or you know flasks or whatnot even if you don't have that profession. And we have that all in the Wowhead guide. So you know, you can have, you know, tailoring for your carpet mount or uh, yeah. leatherworking for your mount. You can be like, oh, well, I don't have alchemy, but I'm going to build this lab because at level three, I can give materials to an NPC and he makes me flasks. And that's yeah. fine. I don't, I don't want to level exactly. alchemy on that. I'll just, I'll just get my basic flask. Yeah. <laughs> and it could be good to, like, level complementary professions. Like, if you're, obviously, if you're leveling enchanting, it could be good to have a building. Obviously, if your profession is enchanting, it could be good to have a building that is creating stuff that you can disenchant. Um, yeah. that allows yeah. you to do that sort of stuff that goes together like obviously you've got your mine and you've got your herb garden which will be within the garrison anyhow so as far as professions for gathering like those are kind of incorporated into the garrison already once you hit certain levels the mine i believe is 92 and the herb garden is 96 so you'll obviously have to level a bit to get those open but uh, once you're there you'll be able to actually gather pretty well so it's actually a good time potentially to consider um on your met on the, the first character you're leveling you might want to consider whether you really want to keep hold of gathering professions if you are if you have those already because there is just the option to get these resources outside of having a gathering profession early on at least um and actually Rosdan asked a great question on that basis yeah. which is hey. <laughs> you tweeted that professions are easier to level now why do you say so so we actually just wrote this big um guide today about yeah. this because we think that the changes to professions are super cool, but with everything going on, a lot of people don't know about this. 
So we sort of went through the basics on why they're easier to level, and it's main, mainly because you can level from 1 to 700 just with drainer mats. Yeah. So when you're skill level 1, you can be making like an item level 550 chess piece to wear using materials from your garrison. You know, if you're an herbalist, skill level 1, you can be picking drainer herbs. Um, you might not get as many herbs as someone that's at max level, but you can totally be, you know, gathering stuff yeah. out there drainer instead of having to like farm a mage weave or, you know, yeah. going to Elwood Forest or anything. Yeah. So that's why that's really cool. And they've also made it so you can just, you know, everything gives like, you know, five skill ups to like 600 and all the ways to get recipes are really easy. There are no really complex things. Yeah. Basically, there's this daily cooldown spell where you, you know, you just make it and you get this book and this currency book and then you can purchase recipes uh, with this book and all the drainer recipes work the same way they start giving yeah. you skill ups at skill level one there's no well I gotta kill this rare spawn because he drops exactly. a cool recipe or I have to grind out you know rep with this faction to hit exalt oh, and yeah. make an awesome bag like <laughs> yeah. you know we it's had him just such Pandaria. a great change from Mr. Pandaria just buy them really... buy what you want yeah. from the vendor buy the stuff you can and start getting good. skilled instantly and that even means epic gear yeah so exactly it takes um the, the epic recipes, of course, like slightly more expensive than the regular recipes, but you can definitely, you know, get enough to buy it in a week. And then if you're skill level one, you can be making this awesome item level 640 ring or chest or cape to wear. So yeah. that's that's pretty cool. So you, you don't even have to feel forced to hit 700. Yeah. It, it, that's all, if you want to do like completionist things or you're really hardcore into professions, it's great. But if you're just like, oh, I want my want three epic thing. coloring pieces, it's like, well, you can be... <laughs> tailoring level 15 and have that exactly which is fantastic and it's just it sort of emphasizes this whole thing of professions being less of a required and more of a sort of if you want to make stuff make stuff if you don't want to make stuff don't make stuff do what you want um so that's pretty fun and i've got a i'm just looking here we've got a bunch of questions to get through so yeah. let's grab <laughs> this one in from kubinek who okay. says Oh, here we go. Speaking of gathering professions, they said on last BlizzCon, people with mining are getting more from their garrison mine compared to people without mining. As it is now, nothing like this is in game. Anything you know about it? I mean, based on the other profession buildings, where the people with with profession A, with building A, are getting more out of it, um, I'm going to say it's pretty likely. I think we've got increased node spawns in mines with mining, if I understand correctly. But you know, it's it. I, we haven't done any great theory crafting on this. Just yeah, I yet. mean, if the flow isn't great, then I'm sure they'll try hot fixing it because, like Olivia was, you know, referencing, there are as your as your skill level gets higher, you do get rewarded with more of a yield on materials. So if you're 700, you get this. Um, you know, your cooldown spell gives you 10 of an item instead of four. Mm. Or if you're you're you know cooking, you create more dishes when you cook something. So. It would be weird if mining and herbalism didn't have that yeah. same reward associated with it. Yeah, exactly. And we're sort of like, I remember hearing of like the additional node spawns in mines. And if it's just the case that you are, you've actually done some testing and you're not seeing that, report it to Blizzard because you should be, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Long story <laughs> short. Um, Argent Rose, going back to those questions, uh, there you go, one to two more ore per node. So it's not actually increased node spawn rates, it's increased ore drops per node spawn. Oh. Uh, so there you go. Thanks very much, Dark Okies. Um, anyhow, how quickly can you get your garrison to maximum level, asks Argent Rose. Is there a path to doing so? We kind of touched on this earlier, yeah. talking about pooling your resources until you get to level 100 so that you can quickly um, double, double upgrade your garrison to get straight to level 3, and that allows you all of the blueprints to open up, and then you're there. Um, so that's kind of, we kind of started that, we kind of answered that one already. Um, just scrolling up to try and find more from chat here. We've got a ton more to get through in the thing. Yeah, uh, uh, just to briefly touch on people asking about class questions. Uh, we have a series of class guides now mm. on WoWhead, uh, written by you know popular theory crafters and bloggers from Twitter and WoW Insiders. So if you're curious how you know one class lines up with another class, or how your talents or how your drainer perks change things, yeah. uh, do check out those guides. You can just go to the front page and when it says classes at the menu at the top, you know, just click on that and go to the role guide for your class. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Pattyford, Pattyford or Pattyford asks, does an engineer building at level one still give people without the profession access to stuff that, uh, sorry, I'm just reading this again. I'm doing a bad job of reading okay. this, uh, that a 
engineer building level one still give people without the profession access to stuff that a skilled engineer can't buy the recipe for at the same building. That sounds like a bug to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> if that is the, if that continues to be the case, again, report it to Blizzard. Um, it should be the case that the engineer buildings will give you nothing more than what you would get with your skill with your um, your profession skill up. So if you're a person without engineering and you have access to things that people with engineering do not have, then that's something to look into for sure. Yeah. Also on the engineering overview guide on Wowhead, we break down um, what non-engineers can get at the engineering works at levels one, two, and three. So, you know, things may have changed during beta. I yeah. know that there's not a huge amount of stuff you can get at level one currently without yeah. Uh, Shami180 asks, do I have to go out mining to find the scroll to level my mining? If you have 100 spare gold, no, you do not. Fly over to Ashran, go to the... No, I, not, no actually not for mining, but it's, oh, it's, not the, for first, mining. it's oh, the first sorry. node you hit. I yeah, found it. Oh, it should be the first node you hit. You don't have to be like me. mining the whole yeah, zone. Yeah, it's, it's not really as bad as the other ones. I found it very, very quickly, so I didn't have a problem with it. <laughs> but there we go. Will this podcast be able, available for download? Yes. And uh, then we Might have... Actually, any ideas on why they changed the trainer perks from one per level to only getting four total? Um, basically, they removed the perks that were tied to sort of like, oh, your ability does 20% more damage. They tried if they, they try to bake a lot of those into the existing abilities because that's essentially what you know <laughs> they they were. So it just sort of felt bloated to yeah, exactly. They, yeah, they just try to like simplify it, which you know I think is fine. Like they didn't actually remove any perks; they just included them in the spell. It just they just sort of shuffled stuff. Around. Yeah, I just answered a question for Kalachuv in chat, but uh, he was, I thought he misspelled quest. And he hadn't. He was just saying cues. He misspelled cues, and I was confused. Uh, <laughs> there we go. And so moving on, another question from uh, Argent Rose: Are garrison patterns account wide, so that if you have one on one account, you have them on all accounts, or does it work differently? Um, uh, level three is uh, account wide because yeah. they take a lot of effort to do. Uh, so the unlocking, completing the achievement to unlock it is account wide. Yeah, so there you go. So, the, but not the level one and two blueprints. Right. Yeah. So just and your garrisons ones. are not account wide. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. So um, someone just asked a great question and I just missed it. Silent Crash 12. Mm -mm, it's scrolling so fast. Silent Crash 1264. For players coming back to the game, do you guys have any tips to help us get back into the swing of things? We have so many guides. I can't yeah. even. Uh, so many guys. Like, if this sounds like an advertisement for Wowhead, for which I apologize, but really head over to Wowhead. Yeah. We've got so much great stuff there for people who are just trying to get back into the game and, um, you know, just understand what's going on and, like, see what, oh my God, what's happened to my class? You've got change. We've got guides for that. We've got guides for the new classes. We've got guides for the changes since the last expansion. We've got guides for literally pretty much everything. Yeah. And if I you mean, see just something to build that on that, like if you if you go into Tanan and your yeah. boosted character, uh, you ha you get your abilities as you quest through the zone. So you don't have this huge bar of like three different things. So you yeah. know, two quests in, you get three more abilities, and five quests in, you get a few more. Yeah. And um, just to touch upon the guides some more too, uh, we've expanded our guide coverage obviously because garrisons are something that. You know, a database is great if you know specific, specifically what you're looking for, but if you don't know what the concept is, you want a guide for it. So we have guides to that. But we also um, we have guides to things like, you know, proving grounds for silver because I know not a lot of people did them in mm -hmm. MOP, and now you have to do them to get uh, to uh, Q4 heroics. So we sort of walk you through those. Um, new to this expansion, we have dungeon guides on Wowhead, and they even cover trash packs. Yeah. So if you're kind of shaky with your class, and you're like, oh man, do I have to see? We have that all covered. So um, we really want to help you guys get through as much as possible. And if you have any ideas for guides or something you can't find on the site, let us know and we'll get into action. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely that. And I mean, there's a couple of things which I wanted to just add to what Purchase said about the, um, if you boosted, and I see someone in chat, Joey Chuck 35 saying, don't boost as a healer, it's miserable. Um, so there's definitely some problems if you're boosting as a healer right now. It's They're not giving you a ton of abilities, and particularly if you're boosting as a Mistweaver monk, um, there's very, very few abilities. I'm pretty certain this is gonna be hot fix pretty soon to give you more abilities at the point of boost. But yeah. if you desperately feel like you're, you've boosted a character and you really, really need to get those abilities, there's a few little tricks that you can pull. Um, if you feel like obviously you 
you've played the game. Like, for example, I boosted a level 66 hunter. Um, I played that hunter as a twink since the Burning Crusade. I know how to hunter. I don't feel like I really need to have all my abilities. Am I flying for some reason taken away? That felt a bit <laughs> weird. Um, so <laughs> things you can do to help with that, and particularly for Mistweaver monks who've only got heals and crackling jade lightning right now um, in order to get your, your actual DPSing abilities, you can do several things. If you don't have dual spec already, you can go learn dual spec, change into it and change out of it. For some reason, that gives you all of your talents and all of your abilities. You can queue, you can zone into a dungeon. Um, so obviously, if you're a healer, this is going to be quicker, and like you, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't necessarily like just jump straight back out again because you can zone into Olbus or Pandaria ones, which um, you will blast through those. You are your boosted character is 20 item levels above it, and everyone else in there is going to be super geared as well. So you can go through those really quickly. But you just zone into them, and you will immediately be granted all of your abilities and your talents and flying and everything um, you can also if you don't want to go into a dungeon from your class trainer you can queue straight into proving grounds so you can literally just visit your class trainer um, they're not actually you can't actually advance in them right now they're limited to bronze until people hit level 100 but you can actually just go into a proving ground and doing that will grant you again all of your abilities all of your talents all of your everything so there's a few little ways that you can slightly sneakily work around that system if you feel like you're completely like done in by having boosted a Mistweaver monk. Um, but yeah, hopefully Mistweavers are going to be getting some additional stuff like, like Dark Oki's mentions in chat, Jab, um, and other damaging abilities with the damaging stance, the stance of the Fierce Tiger, I think. I don't actually play a Mistweaver. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's a bunch of cool changes coming there. Um, so moving on to next questions. Uh, we have got, where are we? Uh, if you have a lot of alts, what's the best way to get them to garrisons without beating your head against a grinding and questing wall? Oh, awesome. We have a guide to this too, actually. <laughs> so basically, get through to Nan, which hopefully should be 20 or 30 minutes. And it's pretty straightforward, but we wrote a walkthrough to that just to, you know, explain kind of the basics in case you're like, hey, which guy drops this quest, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And then once you get through to Nan, go to Shadow Moon or Frostfire, and the very first quest line you have to do is to unlock your garrison. Yes. So, you know, do 10 or so quests. Maybe don't try to take your all through right now because of stuff being bad yeah, maybe not the best with time. the bottlenecks. But yeah, I mean, make sure that they're always, if they're AFK, just AFK them in the garrison to get the resources. Yeah. And um, as you mentioned before, with the profession guides, you know, you can go out, um, buy that scroll to get their skill cap to 700, or, you know, go out uh, in the world and hope for this world drop which after a really short quest line will unlock a specific uh, small garrison uh, building blueprint for you. Yeah. So, you know, if you're just like, oh my, man, I want my ult to just have enchanting um, so it can make cool stuff and then I can send that over to a tailor, um, you know, go do that short quest line, get that drop out in the world, turn that into a garrison blueprint, yep. or that building, and you know, you're, you're good and just make sure it just sort of stays in that garrison whenever it's online. Yeah. It's gaining more resources exactly and it's also good with your when you're leveling in the early part of an expansion like this right now it's very good to actually just log in on all your outs to get their rested ticking um oh, because definitely. If, if you haven't logged in with them in Draenor you actually once to since the expansion has launched you won't actually have your rested xp started and i know that that's tricky right now with the server issues but if you're able to and if you have the time or if you're lucky enough like me to be on a low a lower population server just log in and get your outs going um another thing which is a, a potential Potential pro tip um, is that on the beta at least, and I haven't actually had a chance to try this yet because of the server issue and how busy Perk and I have been, um, but on the beta at least, I was able A, to get a Portal 2 Warspear from a mage, that you can pick those up from level 92 from the Portal Trainer, um, yeah. you can get to Warspear and, um, or Storm Shield obviously for Alliance, make your way, it's a bit harder for Alliance because it's a lot further, but make your way across the continent and across down to Frostfire or Shadow Moon, depending on your faction. And you can pick up that quest right there and then from Juratan or from Khadgar. Who is it for the Alliance? I've forgotten who it is. Yeah. But the Alliance guy. Um, and then you can just go straight into building your garrison. Now, if you have a warlock friend, that's even going to work much better because you can just pull <laughs> straight to where those quest givers are and you don't have to do Tanan. Um, if you would, but that said, Tanan is a great little XP boost. It's a very fast way to get some XP. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, and it's a lot smoother than the Shadow Moon and Frostfire experience yeah. right now because Blizzard, Blizzard did spend a lot of time stress testing Tanan. 
yeah exactly so it's kind of like there's some options for you if you're like maybe later on in the expansion you're sick to death of Tanan like Perk and I are from having done it a ton on the beta um, so <laughs> if we're over there it's it's probably that, that could be something that you can do anyhow moving on um, Horror Bell has asked question can you please explain how to demolish an outpost um, the outpost guide doesn't explain it only how you unlock them we have had a ton of trouble testing this in the beta yeah, um, so I was completely unable to uh, get the option to even make my outpost work in the beta. I know, but you had a little bit more success. Yeah, so I, I built a bunch when I was writing the outpost guide, and in the grand, I believe, I was able to speak to an NPC to who was by in the outpost to change it for 10,000 gold, yeah. but it, it wasn't very consistent. Yeah, so and I, I had other people send I, I, I just sort of kept well. it vague because I know that the option is meant to exist, and it did cost 10,000 gold for me, but I don't want to give detailed instructions or mislead people, so um, we've left that. You know, we'll fill that in when we know more. Yeah. But what we also do know is that uh, if you're thinking, "Oh man, I'm going to rip down this outpost so I can do the other quest line to get this cool follower," um, Blizzard has made it so you you can't sort of double dip. Like they don't want people ripping down their outpost to be a completionist. So yeah. if you have one follower from an outpost, you can't rip that down and get the follower from the other outpost. So, you know, plan plan wisely in advance or, you know, do that on a different character to yeah. get a different piece of followers. Exactly. So you're not, yeah, there's no, there's no, nothing much to be gained apart from the different building. Um, and I've actually seen, just to add to what Perk was saying, I've seen a lot of people, uh, say a lot, several people sending screenshots of NPCs that cropped up in different zones, which you went to them at the outpost to demolish and rebuild. But it's, like I have not in person seen those NPCs once, so it was yeah. I've, so I've also been a hundred as well with the gold, and I'm like, I don't yeah, see it's anything. really, really been incredibly inconsistent. So that's why we haven't like laid it out completely clearly, and I'm sure it'll become clarified in the upcoming days. And once it's in, we'll put it in the guide. So don't worry about it; it'll be in there before too long. Um, so moving on, Sloppy Claw asks, why is there why is there an eye level requirement to enter normal dungeons? I think he had his caps lock stuck on for that one. Um, <laughs> just because, like, it's a pretty low item level requirement of 500, lower than the Uber's requirement of 510 in the 6.0.2 patch. Yeah. Um, it's just to make it so that people who were super low item level aren't slowing stuff down, I think. It's, yeah, like, if you have boosted gear, it's not going to be a fun experience if you're dealing with these mobs and the yeah. trash is more challenging than before, and your gear is just, you know, just not really very good so you know maybe it's just requirements be like hey you know i did a few different things i played my class i hit some yeah. buttons i did some quests to get gear so i feel a little prepared for these dungeons yeah exactly so it's good to just have some additional gear and you can get that pretty easily by questing even like if you just a friend of mine boosted a character yesterday and she was questing and i was waiting for her to be able to actually enter the dungeons with my tank and it took her all of half an hour to actually yeah get like tanan gives you gear in the i level 500 range yeah so it's just a case of be a little bit patient, quest through it, and you'll be absolutely fine. Uh, it's not going to take you long to get to 500, I promise. Um, so moving on, Clinch7786. Did they do anything to make fishing less grueling? Yeah, yes. they did actually, and he had a follow-up question asking in which zones he could get the fish for mm. the cooking recipes he learned. So what they've done in Drainer is that if you are... You know, it's, it's pretty much similar to the other gathering professions. You can get fish at a low uh, fishing level in Drainer. Uh, you just will not get a larger size of fish. Um, that's another change to fishing. There are three different sizes of fish, and you um, gut them to get different amounts of, um, you know, fish meat from them. So if you're at a high skill level, you, uh, if you're like, like 950 or so, you are pretty much guaranteed to get an enormous fish, which you can gut for like, you know, uh, a lot. Five fish, I think you, five of them is something like a piece of meat. While with the small fish, you need 20 of them to get the same amount. But that being said, you know, fishing skill level one, you can totally start fishing for stuff in Drainer. Um, also, you need to have, uh, there is, you need to have a book. And, yeah, you need to have a scroll book to be able to, um, you know, unlock Drainer fishing as well. So um, we do have a guide. Also, something relatively new to Wowhead is that we've been able to take the data from fishing pools and display that on the site. So instead of you know, you can see like what what where the pools are for everything that's on a map now. Uh, so hopefully that helps uh, you figure out what yeah. the 
uh, recipes are. And we should make a note on the guide because I'm sure a lot of people are like, yeah. <laughs> I went to fishing and I just got this cooking thing randomly. Yeah. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, no, there's a ton of calls. And, like, I feel like we're answering a lot of questions with there's a guide for that. And, like, maybe, you know, there is a guide for pretty much everything on Wowhead. Definitely do check them out in our drain or waters of drain or sort of area there on the right hand side at the top of the page. Um, so, uh, Jay Beer just really quickly asked in chat can you upgrade to the digital deluxe version of Waters of Drain? If you have the regular edition, yes, you can. Um, there's a way that you can submit a ticket to get a code for your old edition, but they won't let you do it for just like the additional cost. Like, you have to buy two versions of, of Wild in order to do that. Um, so, yeah, you, it's sort of it's your, your call on that, really. Um, so the other thing that we want to talk about this week, just really quickly before we get back into the questions, is for the first time on this show, we actually have a sponsor, which is, yay, it's super exciting for us. Uh, we only started doing this show 20 weeks ago or so, so about four yeah, months 17. ago. We're, yeah, we're, we're, give or yeah, take. We're, we've had a few, we're on episode 17. We've had a few episodes which didn't have episode numbers because they were like specials, like interviews or healing specials. Um, but we have a sponsor and we're super excited to announce that it is actually Wallows of Draenor, <laughs> which is incredibly fitting for this particular show. So the actual Wallows of Draenor sponsor um, is, is actually sponsoring the show, which is just fantastic news for us. And obviously, as you can tell, we're really, really excited about the game. Um, and yeah. as part of the sponsorship deal, we actually get to play. And like most of the time with these sponsorship deals on video shows, I'm not super excited to do it. But yeah. we have, we've been given a bunch of trailers that we're going to be playing in the show in post editing. So we're not actually going to see it right now. But if you're watching this on YouTube, which it will be put up on YouTube, don't worry, there's going to be a trailer right now. of Draenor. Boost to level 90 instantly. Available now. Read T for team. Obviously, Waters of Draenor launched on the 13th of November. As you all know, everyone who's watching this knows, um, it is a return back to the old Draenor before the uh, they were they drank the blood of Manoroth and became the corrupted the green Yeah, it's orcs. an alternate timeline. It's an yeah. alternate timeline, exactly. So there's a ton of, ton of cool stuff. There's garrisons we've been speaking about a ton in this episode. We've got um, Ashram for PvP. We've got new raids coming on December 2nd. There's so much cool stuff. So um, it's actually really, really exciting to have them on board as sponsors, and we are super grateful to them for that. Anyhow, back to the questions. Um, so actually, no, we can, sorry, excuse me. I actually said the wrong thing before with the digital deluxe. I was thinking of the collector's edition. You can upgrade to the digital deluxe by just paying the difference. It's the collector's edition, the physical collector's edition, which you have to then get the refund with the code. Um, so there you go. Moving on with more questions. Patty Ford or Pattiford says, is the trash loot in dungeons extremely reduced or removed? I, I don't been... believe it is. I don't because, believe it is. What, uh, they removed some things like cash flow from guilds, and I know mm. they mentioned that they were hoping that guilds running stuff could get gold from BOEs. Yeah. So uh, I believe that's still in dungeons. I know that a thing Blizzard likes to do is to name BOEs after various um, players. Yeah. And I've seen some rare dungeon sort of uh, d dungeon quality items from there. And I know they also have them for raids as well. There's actually like a lot of the capes or BOEs from trash. There's yeah. like racers from Black Mall Foundry. So I don't think that's going away, really. No, we, I don't think so. I think part of what may be causing Pattiford or Patty Ford to ask the question is I did a bunch of dungeons. My preferred me method of leveling is dungeons. Um, <laughs> so I did a bunch of dungeons yesterday. And there just seemed to be no loot at all. Like, nobody was getting any loot. And I think there might be excuse huh. me, a problem with loot in dungeons right now. Um, we also will get barely getting any XP for boss kills. Yeah, so that, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> yeah, something. Fu I, th I think that something funky is going on right now with dungeons. And I think that might be what's causing Patty Ford to ask that question. It's a reasonable I concern. Um, obviously, do if you actually go through a dungeon and you get literally no loot, do what I did and submit a GM ticket. Because you should see at least, like I talked to my fellow dungeoneers, my friends, <laughs> and literally literally no loot at all dropped for any of us in that dungeon, uh, which is highly odd. And yes, there's yeah. a chance that you might not get loot in any given instance that you do, but for literally no one to get even one piece of loot, yeah, not even gold, not even silver, 
something funky is going on. <laughs> so definitely submit a ticket. I did. I haven't heard back yet because I can't imagine why, but they seem a little busy right now. <laughs> so yeah there's definitely something funky going on there uh, moving on Kubernetes asks one thing that is horribly badly communicated in game is what followers with profession perks are adding to the whole picture with the 20 follower cap it would be a good idea to know if you should aim for certain follower perks through the in so followers are kind of tricky yeah. um, because so many of them can have randomized perks so, uh, for example, if you're out questing in the world and you get uh, this rare follower, it could have one sort of freebie spot and then it turns into a perk you really like. Or if it's level 100 and you're still putting it on missions and it's getting XP, eventually that follower becomes epic, which means it has even more randomized uh, abilities and traits. And it's like, oh, well, now I got this other thing I wanted to. Yeah. So, also want to point out that if you have a 20 follower cap, you can... Um, deactivate a follower and you can spend gold to reactivate it so it's not like if you hit 21 you're gonna get rid of a follower and then it's gone for good or if you get it back it's gonna be level 90 with nothing again yeah so you can rotate followers around um, that being said uh, the tooltips uh, in game for follower abilities are really vague they don't you're just like oh this adds something to your alchemy lab it doesn't really <laughs> say what they do so uh, we've left Wowhead comments and again guides on what all the profession perks actually do and you can determine if they're worth it or not um, it is probably good if you're concerned about getting crafting reagents to have a follower with, with a profession perk because that increases the amount of stuff you get yeah um, also if you like cosmetic things the, the enchanting one is really cool because that le lets you change the appearance of your weapon but, you know, others are just like, oh, I got a quest to get some more gold. So, you know, you can pick and choose. Um, I would say, though, that if you want to just get a wide variety of followers and you don't want to sort of gamble and hope that you'll get a randomized ability you like, you know, definitely go to the inn and pick that, you know, weekly follower that you want with the ability that you really, really want to have. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Kubernetes adds in chat, my point is when a follower is in the building, you just get bonus active. And if you just head over to uh, the Wowhead buildings, guys, you can see a little bit more information on those, as Perk was just saying. So, for example, I believe the like the increased number of work orders or produce, production from work orders, basically you get more out of the buildings when you have followers. Yeah, and also, like you said, like, you know, on the, on the Wowhead page, like we say things like, oh, you know, you know, in addition, um, certain herbs can spawn in the garden, for example. Yeah, exactly. So there's a bunch of different stuff in there. I agree it's badly communicated in game, which is why we've made an yeah, effort to try and get that out. Actually, in old data mining, they used to say what they did, but then they yeah. took that. So I guess they That's want weird. the sense of exploration. So we had the old version saved. So I'm just like, oh, cool. I'll just copy paste yeah. and verify in game that it still does the same stuff. <laughs> exactly. Um, so moving on, B Free 86 says, pertaining to perks, are there only four perks per specialization, or are there more than four? And it randomizes one every two levels for you. Now this is drain all perks. This yes. isn't the follower perk. So it's just a case of they've they've removed half of them. So previously you used to get one every level from 91 to 100 and now you get one every two levels and it's like so say for for elemental shaman you've got the same four as every other elemental shaman for enhancement shaman they're the same four as every other enhancement shaman there's no differentiation between those um, I yeah see, that would be a nightmare for oh my like, god yeah for balancing like if you leveled a shaman and got the wrong ones that would yes. be so bad um i saw that uh leo pluridon in chat earlier mentioned that they got uh, the wrong one they got an enhanced one on their elemental shaman bug report <laughs> definitely a bug report for that one so definitely that's a, a concern and um, so moving on rebo x or rebow x or something else says if you assign a follower to a building does it count as an active follower since you can only have 20 of 25 followers active at a time i believe that the answer to that is yes it does count yeah as in the ui panel saying. if like someone's on a mission it's like hey this guy's on a mission it says that next to the follower and uh, if they're assigned to a building, it says that as well. Yeah. So the game just treats it as like, you have this follower, but he's otherwise engaged. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, not quite. So then moving on, Beer 1514 Can you explain how quest reward items can randomly upgrade to a higher level? Is this the same with dungeon or raid gear? Ah, Adam's questions. Yay, Adam's questions. Perk's favorite questions. <laughs> so basically, pretty much for every quest item uh, in Drainer, if it's uncommon, meaning it's green, 
it can be uh, a rare version, which is like 10 item levels higher, or an epic version, which is 20 items level higher from the green version. And likewise, if, you, uh, if the sort of generic version is rare, you can get an epic version that's 10 item levels higher. And it just is a random chance. It's a pretty low chance to have that happen. And um, a lot of people have actually been asking about this, so I had our devs actually add a line to all of the quest pages on Wowhead if um, the quest rewards uh, can be that. So if you're looking at Wowhead and you see rewards and you see all the different weapons for your spec, underneath it will be like, hey, this item has a chance to be the following. Is this the same with Dungeon or Raid Gear? So without, without uh, digressing too much, a lot of these item cha changes with their chances has caused a lot of work for Wowhead, so I always laugh when these questions come up. But the quest reward system is different than all the sorts of dungeons and raid variations. Uh, quest rewards can only have a chance to be rare or, or epic, but with dungeon and raid gear, the, uh, the bonuses you get, you can, they can be warforged, so you get an item level upgrade. Uh, they can have a socket, or they can have one of four tertiary stats. And those sort of three clumps of bonuses can be combined. So you can have a raid item that is both warforged with avoidance and has an extra socket. While your crest reward is either here's the item, here's the item that's like the blue version, or here's the item that's the epic version. So As yeah, that. That, that's items in Warlords. Yeah, that's <laughs> items in a nutshell in Warlords. Um, so yeah, a ton of good information there. We then have got a question from CCC38941 who asks, do you think flying will come to Warlords of Draenor? What will Blizz do then with, for example, Druid's flying form or the flying mounts we have used time to get. He's assuming then, or he, she is assuming then, that it won't actually be coming. Um, Perk and I have said several times that we are pretty comfortable with saying that it is gonna be coming. Like, we're pretty convinced that it's gonna crop up before yeah. too long. Like, I'm pretty sure that whenever Tanan becomes a real zone or feral onto the north, yeah. that suddenly you can fly in all the other areas, but not the new areas. Exactly, yeah. And if so... you check our BlizzCon interview, we asked Alex at the store, like, hey, so yeah. <laughs> he's not flying. And he, he was really vague about something coming yeah, with it. Yeah, he was a little out. cagey about yeah. it, but he wanted to sort of tease us with a, um, a thing that they were working on. He said, he called it, for um, for transportation, but he was being super cryptic about it. So yeah. we don't know what's going We are going to trying to get on. information. We are obviously trying to get information. Just yeah, not. exactly. Um, one really quick one from Jay Beer 1514 who asked, do the items with gem slots or a tertiary stat have a higher item level? Not necessarily. It's um, like, it's a separate bucket. Yeah, exactly. So you have a, every time you get an item, you get the item and you've got it in your hands and that item has a chance to have any or all of tertiary stats, gem so additional gem sockets or warforged. So it could be all of them. It could, like, if you're really lucky, it could be all three of them. Um, yeah. However, it could also be none of them. It could be one of them, two of them, any, like, there's any combination of those three. So it's three, it should be viewed there's three separate chances to get something additional on your yeah. gear, basically. So there you go. Uh, moving on, Veku asks, question, what's the best buildings to build first in a garrison for someone who wants to make money? I would say the crafting ones. Yeah, I would say the crafting ones. Yeah, with maybe the trading yeah. post? Yeah, I would say that the, um, the lumber mill uh, is pretty good because that lets you pump out buildings faster if you turn in the work orders uh, as well. And with the salvage yard, um, mm. it's really good because when you complete a mission, you have a chance with the salvage yard to get this box. And this box can contain all sorts of BOEs, so you could get lucky and get this, you know, really cool, rare transmog BOE that everyone wants, which can sell for a lot. Yeah. And when you get the building to level 3, which you have to be level 100 and have opened 100 salvage boxes from, you can start to get item level uh, 665 BOEs from salvage. Which is pretty cool, and you know they sell that is going to sell for a lot. Yeah, definitely. So that there's definitely some really good ones that you can make money from. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Rebo X asks, when will you get new garrison missions? Sometimes they have three, sometimes none available. How does that work? Um, so well, yeah. Sorry, Pat, go ahead. Well, I mean, it it's it does scale based on the number of um, followers you have, so you're not going to have like. 20 missions in one follower. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what level you are right now, but 
I mean, I imagine that you don't have your followers all maxed out, or you know, maybe you're not a hundred yet. Um, there are more missions uh, that are, you know, geared towards level hundred. Um, also, keep in mind that when you are a hundred, even more tiers of missions open up based on the item level of your followers. So it may be kind of slow at first, but maybe Blizzard's also assuming that instead of you know monitoring your garrisons at level ninety or ninety two, you're trying to quest and you're doing other things, yeah. and you don't want to be constantly harping back to manage your missions. And when you're a hundred, you can get more into the mini game for them. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's a bunch to, to consider there. And um, B three eighty six, we did answer your question. There are more, there are not more than four perks. They are ra they are not randomized. It's just the order that you get them in. So you've got perks A, B, C, and D on any given spec. There's only four. They took out half of them, and you basically it will be one of those four. So you might go C B A D. You might go A B C D. You might go B A C D. But you're only going to get those four. Basically, it's as simple as that. Hopefully, that answers your question. Um, moving on, Flame Scythe 1983 says, with the Apexis crystals being the new type of currency in game, will trying to obtain these crystals become a real challenge? Also, how do you think this impacts raiders? Um, so Apexis crystals are basically valor. <laughs> <laughs> kind of without the upgrades. without the upgrades yeah apex is like we, perk and i were laughing about this um on an earlier show we were talking about how they were taking valor out and then putting apexus crystals in um but they are effectively a valor replacement with the exception of the upgrade we upgrade system um i don't think they're going to be any more of a grind on raiders than valor was already i don't think they're going to be a big problem simple really they, yeah they're just we valor. brought up a little blurb to apexus crystals on the currency yeah. page but basically um, at your garrison town hall, you get this daily quest, and it rewards anywhere between 800 and 1,000 crystals if yeah. you go out to an area and you just, like, kill a bunch of mobs, and then your bar fills up. Um, and there's also other things you can do, like certain garrison um, work orders have a chance to have crystals. Um, one thing that I think is really good to point out that I didn't realize and a user pointed it out to me mm. is that the uh, different higher tiers of Apexus crystals uh, are apparently um, not available until High Mall and Black Rock. Oh, that's these. interesting. So right now, uh, it's just you are working towards your 630 Apex Apexus gear and any mounts or pets that you want to get from factions. That's really good information, so actually. That's stagger it out some more. Yeah, it's kind of nice to make them feel like you don't have to like really level hard. Um, so moving on, Grimmy the Face asks. Do followers that are assigned to buildings and as bodyguards gain XP? I don't think. I don't think. So. I mean, I'm not sure. Like it, you, the follower, you need so you need a follower that's a bodyguard. Bodyguards yeah. do special things. You can recruit them from the barracks, and then you can take them out with you in the world and get XP. Yeah. Um. So I don't think I don't know if they even can be coded to have a profession perk associated with them, but. If you don't, you can only have one following you around at the time. So, if none of them are following you around and you're out questing by yourself and killing mobs, I don't believe they're going to be getting any yeah. of that XP because you didn't actually exactly. go to the barracks and talk to them and have them follow you specifically. So it seems unlikely. So you might want to have like followers for your like at your buildings and then different ones that you're doing missions on that sort of thing. Yeah, and like I don't like you definitely want to have the bodyguards going out and doing cool things because at level three they do really super cool things like one summons, one has your missions table, like a portable table, one the mailbox. Mm. Um, so the bodyguard, there's only a handful, there's only five for each faction, so you, you do not want to be being like, oh, I'll just send the, bar the bodyguard to like go, you know, get flowers or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, CCC38941 asks, when will raids be out December 2nd? And we've added to our uh, live raid and high mall post the blue post that was made actually yesterday morning about this. An interesting thing of note is that LFR is staggered, and it's not into two wings like we thought, but it's actually three wings. So the very um, last boss is its own LFR wing, which uh, that comes out in January uh, 2015, actually. Yeah, so it's actually uh, quite a staggered release. and least. heroic are uh, December 2nd December. or December. Yeah, and that's actually when the PvP season starts as well, if anyone's interested in that. Uh, Jev Naka or Jev Naker asks, do you think we will be able to get Garrosh Looms from a Warlord's vendor, and when will we get the Wowhead party? He says, what? I'm assuming he means VOD. So just I thought really... he meant the Collector Editions. Oh, maybe the Collector yeah, Editions. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, I'm not sure. Um, obviously, we couldn't ship those before Warlords officially released. <laughs> <laughs> so we will get those. They'll be on. The, they'll be with the winners as soon as possible. Um, 
Then, as far as the garage heirlooms, if you meant the VOD for the party, oh. just in case you meant the VOD for the party, okay. I assumed it was a typo, but Perk's probably right. But just in case, that is unfortunately uh, in the hands of the people who live streamed it. So um, keep an eye out on their station for that. And obviously, as soon as it appears, we will put a link up to it on Wowhead. Um, and as far as the garage heirlooms from a Warlords vendor, I think that's pretty unlikely. Yeah, as we were talking to one of the devs uh, at BlizzCon, we were saying, hey, we've seen all this really, you know, time sensitive or limited content, yeah. things that just go away for a while. Is this a trend? And he was saying that, yeah, he thinks it's going to be a trend because it incentivizes people to log on. So I don't think we'll see them for a while. Um, all of the models you can get from PvP gear, I believe, um, some of the classic models. So I think it's basically if you got it, then that's cool. Um, you know, now with Warlords, if you're you know, if you come back six months later, yeah. you can have your main character make a really cool 630 weapon and send it to your alt to you. So it sort of negates the purpose of the heirlooms. It's, you know, it's a cool feature, but the heirlooms are not as good exactly. as Rope Dungeon Gear. There you go. Oh, and actually, Pem Permius says, the vod if you meant the VOD of the party, which it sounds like he didn't, oh. uh, it's actually up, but the second half is muted due to copyright. Thanks, Twitch. Me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Morlo more Derex asks, if possible, how can we reset buildings we have picked? Um, I'm assuming you mean in the main garrison there. Yeah. Uh, so that's just a case. It's a probably perk. Do you want to take that one? Yeah. So basically, just open up the garrison table. Yeah. And on the left hand side, you see all the potential buildings you can have. So you just sort of drag and drop onto the plot you want. And there should be a prompt being like, hey, do you really want to destroy this building? And, yeah. you know, then you can go ahead and. You know, keep in mind, it does still take materials, it does still take time to build a new building, etc. Exactly. Sorry about that. My everything just bugged out really hard and I was trying to stop it from stopping the recording. Um, so moving on, uh, we've, really got, we've not got time for a ton more questions. We have been going for over an hour at this point. So we'll do a few more questions. So if you have any other questions, pop them in chat right now and we will do our best to get to them. We've still got a ton from the site which you haven't answered, which I'm starting to feel bad about. So we'll go quickly. Is there any incentive to switch outpost buildings in each level 100 zone on a single character? Not really, unless you want that building. Uh, the, it is easier to pick the opposite buildings on and out, yes. Yeah, and they've, they've de-incentivized that because, like, as we said before, you can't switch and get the opposite follower uh, if you switch the outpost. Exactly that. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. There's not much a ton of incentive unless you really want that other building in there for some reason. How are the flight paths in Warlords? I hope they've been sped up and hopefully smartened with the removal of the guild buff. They're much better. They're, they, we've yeah, we lost a lot of feedback on the paths looking really bad because yeah. they really bad in early beta. Oh man, some of them were terrible. Um, how is Ashram playing or is it too hard to tell with relatively few max level characters? Kind of too hard to tell at the moment. Um, how, approximately how long should it take the average person to go from entering Draenor to building his or her garrison? You touched on An this hour. earlier. Less yeah. than an hour, I'd say. Like yeah, if, do Tanan and do your if 10 If you go plus. through Tanan in an efficient manner, it should take you no more than 25 minutes, and then you should be, like, 10 minutes later, you should be building your garrison. Cordell19, we actually answered this question already about what controls the incoming missions. Uh, several professions, and I wasn't getting the journal drops. Uh, does, does, the, does buying the scroll from Ashran have the same effect to your profession as picking up the quest item from using your profession? Yes, it does. Yeah, I mean, mostly. Like, you can, um, if you pick up the quest item, you also get the garrison blueprint eventually. Mm. But if you're just like, hey, give me, I don't want to do garrisons, give me my profession scroll so I can start learning daily cooldowns and recipes, then yeah, just go to Ashran. Yeah, exactly that. So uh, then moving on, Terralyn. Garrison buildings, do you think it's more value for a character with a particular profession to have a building with that profession or a building with a profession not owned? So if you're an engineer, is it better for you to have an engineering building or to have a different building? And remember, Terra Lynn, that you actually have three profession buildings that you can throw in there. Um, so I would personally say get the one initially, at least, for your personal profession that gives you access to the higher level stuff. Once you get beyond that higher level stuff and you feel like you maybe don't want it anymore, then I'd consider replacing it. Um, yeah. Also keep in mind there are a few uh, professions where you need to be 700 to use things like the um, leatherworking and tailoring mounts. You have to be 700 to use those. Yeah. So 
if you have that garrison building and it's going to be pumping out more materials for crafting, then you then you get to 700 faster. Exactly, yeah. And definitely, like we mentioned earlier, again, complementary buildings um, that will allow you to level stuff up faster are a great idea too. Yeah, the barn is really good. The it helps you get awesome. skins. It helps you get um, meat, uh, furs for leather, for, furs for tailoring, and uh, the trading post as well because you can turn resources into like herbs and meat and other. Exactly that, yeah. So a ton of ton of good stuff there at different buildings. And do do check out the um, the bite sized garrison guide is really useful for this. We've actually separated all the buildings out into the different things that they could be useful for. Yeah. So if you want to see like okay, I want to go hardcore crafting, what should I build? Um, there's something that you can definitely look at there. Uh, moving on, while I fiddled with PvP, never got a good at it or particularly enjoyed it. Hard to enjoy something where you get killed in two hits, fair. Um, how about a guide to su how to survive or thrive in PvP? Great idea. Um, we're always yeah. open to other guide suggestions and that's something that I personally would really enjoy writing. So I will absolutely put something like that together. Um, moving on, a few more from Twitch chat. And Twitch chat, if you're still watching and you still want to ask questions, and you still have stuff that's unanswered, <laughs> dump it in now because we really are going to stop pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, Dark Okies asks, question, how do you think they will handle the time limit of things like Molten Core if some of us can't level in time due to login issues? If that is genuinely a problem, I don't doubt that they'll extend it. Yeah, I, I believe before when there was some problems in game that they gave everyone like a free day of playtime, so something yeah. like that. So if... If for some reason this goes on for something, you know, long, like a week, or if they've decided that it's unacceptable, that there's a few days yeah. where things are really bad and it's out of their control, I do think they want to keep people happy, especially after all, like, exactly. the BlizzCon, and they, they want people playing the game that are trying to play it. Yeah, absolutely. And Bills, Bills Lowski 002 says, any word on aliens coming back and what currency we will use to buy them? Um, this is actually a question that we just asked with uh, Jeremy Fiesel at BlizzCon on our interview there. Um, they will be coming back. Uh, we don't know exactly any about the currency yet, but it'll watch this space, basically. They're coming. Um, Mitchy has a very specific question regarding Mistweavers um, about the horrible state of AoE healing on them. Uh, we do not know about future changes for class designers. I would definitely keep an eye on the hot fixes, uh, make a note somewhere on the feedback forums, and try and get that information out there. Um, then Desert Dwarf says, my blacksmith is only about 300. I have a level one garrison. What do I want to do to level up my blacksmithing? We touched on this earlier. Yeah, but this is, yeah, this is just a really good plug because I know people have been coming yeah, in. Yeah, definitely. But we have uh, basically, you want to get this scroll. You can buy it in Ashran, 400 gold. And it teaches you a few uh, drainer quality recipes. And for blacksmithing, I know the armor you make gives five scallops a pop. So basically, you can just, you know, Get, you know, set up your mine, or if you're mining, get the ore from Draenor, and just keep making the recipes that you learn automatically from this scroll. And mm. if for some reason you don't like those recipes, um, you automatically learn a recipe that gives you um, an item to buy more recipes, so buy something that you like. And we go over sort of what all the skillops are in the Wildhead Blacksmithing Guide, and in the Bite Size Guide we made today, we sort of break down how you can get to that point, how you can get those that scroll that gives you, you know, those five uh, instant recipes. Exactly. Um, so moving on, Rebo X asks, are there pictures of the racial guard stroke death knights anywhere on the net? I believe we have them on Wowhead. I of think the, we have. I think the 3D model viewer. Um, I know it's kind of hard to level up barracks uh, hmm. with how often they were resetting things. Um, but if you, you know, if you search for things like I don't know, like lunar full guard, you do see that a lot of them do have different models. Um, but yeah, I am really curious to see them. Just as a refresher course, uh, when you hit level three yeah. with your barracks, uh, you can customize the what the guards look like uh, based on the different reputations you have. Exactly. Um, so then moving on, Sea Throw War says, do you think Sargeras needs free server transfers? <laughs> I, I mean, this is hard to say. I don't, I, I, I don't personally have characters on Sargeras. Um, so I, I believe you that the login times are bad. Um, I wouldn't, I, I, didn't, I mean, I don't know. We're not Blizzard. We can't answer those questions. Yep. Um, if people are transferring off the server to get like into the game, then maybe, but I, I, we can't answer that, unfortunately. Um, Wiffit asks, have they said anything about the time when character not found will be fixed? I'm posting a forum post into the chat yep. link right now that is talking about how you can work to resolve that. It's not going to be 100% fix, but they are working really hard on it. And two people, including Barricade XX, and I'm sorry if you're the first person I missed yours, I just saw someone else saying, oh yeah, that's another good one. Where's the honor vendor? Um, the honor vendors are in Ashrans proper, so you'll actually need to and go through... 
sorry. Also, I was going to say that um, as we keep getting data from Wowhead, uh, we have maps for everything now. There you go. So you can type in Honor Quartermaster, and you can see that, you know, Warlord Noctin and Marshall Karch Storm Stormforge are located in Astran. And then you can, if you open up that page, you can see the dots where they are on the map with the coordinates. It's very, so very um, we've uh, been changing up how we pull data in. We've actually got, gotten a lot of locations and like vendor prices already during the beta. So on day one of launch, we have a lot of maps set up, but we're still processing user data. So the database is, you know, really complete, you know, multiple times per day. Exactly. And my, my chat is bugging out pretty hard on me, but I can see that Mitchie is saying, when you guys talked to BlizzCon about the dev, Re, to the dev re blood elf models news um we did we, we, we tried did. it's at the it's at the uh beginning of one of our Alex interviews yeah, interview. yeah. yeah um he was super cagey um he said that they were being worked on it that they looked good but he was not interested in giving us any kind of release time yeah. frame on the blood elf models and i'm not surprised honestly like they don't want to promise something earlier than it exactly. comes but he said they're being worked on and that they are looking great which as someone playing a blood elf paladin as my current pve main i'm definitely excited to hear <laughs> because like it just looks so bad compared to the other ones <laughs> um and i think that is oh there's one more there can we help the extra? We can. I, I think we can X Calamity, X I, mm. I, how do you feel about being able to buy tournament realm PvP items to get into heroics and skip normals? I think that that's, I don't think that's intended. No, they, if they, no. those tournament realm PvP items were yeah. introduced, as the name suggests, for tournament realms. Um, so if you are able to take those, you, you can't buy them. They are basically, they turn into white gear outside of those areas. So they're only effective. The, the intended design, I should say, is that they are only effective when you're actually within a war game or within a tournament area. So um, if you are able to use those in heroic dungeons, that is unintended behavior. Or if behavior. you're inflating the item level, I don't if think. If you're inflating you're... item level yet, yeah, that is unintended behavior and it should be bugged. Um, basically, that is not what those are for. They are purely to make it easier for people to organize tournaments. Um, so there you go, that, that's it. That's a bug, basically. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions in yeah, chat right now. Someone's asked me about my dress, and I can post <laughs> a picture after, just because the, the bottom yeah, of this Yeah, follow is, at Peculiar that on, on Twitter. Follow her on Twitter in the name that you just typed, and she will tweet. She, she's great at tweeting pictures of her awesome dresses and other <laughs> awesome clothing. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is about all we have got time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. As ever, you can follow me on Olivia D. Grace. I finally learned what side it's on on my screen. And you can follow Perk <laughs> on Peculiar. She's over there and it's above her screen. You can follow Wowhead on Wowhead. And as ever, head over to wowhead.com for everything you need to know about Orders of Draenor, about garrisons, about pretty much everything to do with the game. And um, just check it all out. We have got a huge Warlords uh, landing page, so to speak, which you can access on the right hand side at the top of the page thank you so we have much a garrison hub too slash oh garrison. yes slash garrison database to garrisons we've got all of our guides oh, and tools there so in case you're awesome. like overwhelmed and not keeping track yeah. like i was really we're trying to we're to trying to break it. the guides into manageable <laughs> chunks and working on them a lot today so we have a ton of stuff for you to be looking at thank you so much for watching and we will see you again next time Bye bye <laughs>